To grab hold of the game, you have to start in the draft phase. It's going to be Fnatic on the blue side, Young Generation on the red, a Rek'Sai and Cogmore ban from Fnatic, and the Callista to start us off. Callista still 100% pick ban throughout this tournament. Yeah, still up there. Zaya is another AD carry that jumps to mind. And now, what happens to Rakan? Lover's taken away, banned on blue side a lot. Is it a first pick Rakan? Because that's what Jez has had, and it did so well for him. His engages were disgusting. And that bot lane of Fnatic is so reliable. Jez is being a key component of the team. Jarvan banned out as well. Sejuani removed mm. from the pool. And now you're looking, Tristana is yeah. available for Reckless if he wants it. Yeah, the Tristana makes a lot of sense because it's that late game carry for Reckless. And also I talked about before, probably the safest AD carry to split push and pick up farm with because of her two self peels. So I definitely think that's a great champion for Reckless and allows him to be self-sufficient. Even if his tanks are behind, this Tristana will still be able to stand and fight with her range. And the fact that Reckless is just such a great player mechanically. We have seen uh, Pallet pick up the Thresh before, but instead he goes towards the Lulu this time. Venus will get the Gragas in the jungle. A lot of good disengage and strength there from a young generation to start off their draft. And now it's gonna put Broxa on something a little bit different, maybe something a little more aggressive in the early game because the Sejuani, the Gragas, and the J4 as well as the Rek'Sai are gone. And that's the Elise, so. You wanted something that was more early game aggressive, Elise definitely does that. And a Syndra for Caps as well. Yesterday he played the LeBlanc into Syndra matchup and struggled a huge deal with it. Here Norl has the opportunity to counterpick, but if he does, you start to fall down that AD carry pool because you have to expect Fnatics to try and isolate that role. Exactly, and now you get to ban out some Cinder counters if you want, or just take care of that top lane and not have you know, too many things jump up uh, in terms of what would be fantastic to play uh, at the moment. The Galio, the Cho'Gath, I feel like deserves a ban. Rakan's still available here. Yeah, well. I don't think they'll get picked. And maybe by Jez's, maybe. Why, so why why won't it get picked out? It could be banned. Because I think it'll get banned. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, that makes sense, because I was wondering if there was some sort of weird logic where if you have a leash, you're not allowed to pick Rakan. But no, we'll no. see if Young Generation ban it out. Fnatic looking towards those mid lane counters that we talked about, removing the LeBlanc from Nord. The LeBlanc. Uh, so it looks like he did Caps doesn't want to play the opposite Either matchup, side of the matchup. Right? <laughs> Yeah, doesn't want to play it. Maybe he's like, maybe he knows something I don't. And so there's the Rakan being banned away. Yeah, I just don't think it would be seen there because Jesus has looked pretty crazy on that champion in terms of taking a game where he was in charge of engage and just constantly engaging and setting up Fnatic into these fights. It's still the option for him to go something like a Janna and just play super safe in that bot lane. We've seen them play the Ooh. Tristana Janna already today. Fnatic looking for their next ban here. Are going to take Shen away from Young Generation. Cho'Gath jumps to mind as one of the S tier top laners right now that's available. Uh, you could pick him into a lot of these aggressive matchups too, and he'll do fine in scale. Don't know how well it would fit into the composition, but at the same time, let's see. I feel like you pick mid here because of the fact that you already see what you're playing into. Yes, and it's the Cassidy for Null. Cassidy incredibly strong in that mid lane when utilized to good effect, of course, has that magic damage shield as well. It's important to note that Young Generation are playing with Nocti today. They played with Ren yesterday and got their first win with Nocti earlier on today against KLG and are now looking for their second against Fnatic, who have just looked in the brawn. Yeah, great point there. And now, yep, the Cho'Gath, I feel like that would go over to Soaz, and now puts pressure on Young Generation. And like you said, Nocti in the top lane, help them get that first win. Now he's going to have to play. If he plays a tank into this, Cho'Gath noms the tanks. If he plays something that's aggressive, he's going to have to get help. Galio is a strong tank, sitting at a 75% win rate across the tournament thus far. Could have been the Nar as well, but it is going to be Galio. Nocti known much more for his tank and utility top laners than for the aggressive top laners of Ren. This Galio really helps Null engage on the back line. So if this Cassidy decides to go ham and jump in, which a lot of the times that's the Cassidy dream is to get a flank and jump in on an AD carry or the mid laner behind the back line, the Galio will be able to join him, have that hero's entrance and keep him safe. So we're definitely looking towards mid lane. Mm -hmm. We've seen no body cap. He solo before. killed him twice. So yeah, we're definitely watching to see what happens here because Cassidy's matchups are pretty good now. And we'll see what happens with that double teleport and the fact they have triple global on the side of Young Generation if they can use this. And want to see how Broxa plays the early game jungle as well. Elise yes. is an early game jungler. It's something Broxa is known for as well. 
He has played an incredibly strong Elise across the entirety of his career, and he really needs to set up his lanes for success. Bot lane probably going to be a little bit more passive. Reckless and Jezus are happy to stand back behind the shield when they need to. But looking at top, looking at mid, and looking to see how Fnatic close out their play-ins group stage run. And you want to end it on that 4-0 if you're Fnatic. You don't want to drop any games, have that you know, hint of weakness. But Null was kind of the one to expose Caps a little bit in that mid lane in terms of how much help he gets. But when you have an Elise up against the Cassidy that sucks at wave clearing early, you can tower dive him pre-6 and have it be something that's very favorable for you. So Fnatic are set up to play around that mid lane if they want to, but it's always the execution. It's always the play style and what goes your way. I like to play the lane game really quickly, which is who wins what lane just based off of champions. So bottom lane, you would expect Young Generation to win this with the Varus who's aggressive early into the Tristana and the fact that this Lulu went aggressive. He's not going for that coin. Coin doesn't have any combat stats on it. It's got 5% CDR. He's gone for the Spell Thief's Edge. So he's looking to just be a harasser up against this Braum. So it's a double range versus a melee and a range in that bottom lane. So Young Generation would win that. Mid lane Caps will win this typically. Uh, does matter if Cassidy gets favorable trades with his Q, but his wave clear is not comparable to the Syndra, so the Syndra has pressure and priority. Uh, and then we have a winning jungle with the Elise, and then top lane for Fnatic. I feel like that's a winning matchup for the Cho'Gath uh, more often than not. It's more even, but the fact that the Cho'Gath can go through the damage reduction later on of the Galio is important. So Fnatic kind of had this quadrant of Broxa, Caps, and Soaz this triangle in the top side that I feel like he'll play towards. And bottom will most likely be Reckless and Jez's like the previous game going, we're cool, bro. We'll just stay underneath the turret, pick up our CS, and we'll be good in the mid late game. And the reason that's so good for Fnatic as a strategy, it's something they've used very often in the EU LCS, is that Reckless and Jez's are so reliable in the 2v2 matchup. Exactly. And so that's the thing here is we saw them get kind of pressured in that first game where there was a lot on fix on Chaos Latin Gamers to win bottom side. Now in this game, it looks like Young Generation's team comp is built around four or five man diving bottom. Double teleport, the Cassidy, the Galio, and you have pressure bottom lane. So if Young Generation hit those level sixes and they're proactive, we could see Jez's and Reckless have pressure on this bottom side. And there they go immediately in the tri brush trying to chunk out Jez's so they get pressure. Bitcoin needs to be a slight bit careful because the explosive charge is on him and the concussive blows teams up pretty well with that as well we do see broxer get his level two got a super leash to start him off and now is invading straight away but is on a ward has been spotted out yeah it's the pressure and he wants to push and this is the elise right you want to have uh early game that's favorable he's late waiting for the skull crab he was too early he was too fast insect against insect Arachno ah, okay. arachnoid against well i guess it's a crustacean crab isn't it that's true be technically correct yes uh looks like it was a experience quint for Broxa, and then right here, Venus. Uh. Hasn't got Smite, so it does actually have to be a little bit cautious, because Soas is looking for the knockup <laughs> into the nom. Soas steals away the Rift Scuttler. And that's not just big to take it away, that's really big to actually just get him an advantage in the lane. He'll miss maybe a CS or two here. Uh, it looks like not much in that wave at all. He's ahead, and it's going to just get him even further ahead, and it's a big chunk of gold. It's where experience can tell as well. So as such a veteran of the uh, of the world stage, been here with Origin before, of course. Nocti, a little bit more inexperienced uh, in this top lane, was brought in actually right at the end of Young Generation's uh, playoff run because they needed him to help them reverse sweep. He, he won the last three games for them in the finals. Uh, and was able to help Young Generation secure the second seed from GPL to be here today. Nocti's been that kind of clutch guy. Now he's up in CS, but it's just the wave going back and forth. He's going for an early back. I expect some Dorans to help wave clear. Maybe the old Galio build, we'll see. Uh, gone are the days of triple Dorans, usually. Sometimes we see a couple of them. Dark Seal and Dorans, and so you kind of have that 215 AP item. Uh, and if you can get a kill or two, you know, you're up kind of where you were before, but it was mostly the mono regen was the big thing, just spamming Q every single wave and you were good to go. But that was kind of circumvented now by the fact that the Dark Seal gives you some extra mana and it allows your healing potions. If you go for the corrupting, they also help out there. Caps forcing in the mid lane as we expected him to do. Null, without that early game pressure that he had yesterday against Caps, he will just be looking to scale up and Venus setting vision around that mid lane to try and keep his Cassidy safe as much as possible. Something we've seen 
EU LCS teams and Fnatic especially struggle to do. I look back to Rift Rivals and say they don't really help out Caps in this mid lane. They don't give him those control wards. Broxer is pathing around there, but Young Generation have the advantage down towards that bottom side. Oh, well, Broxer also has a large advantage for himself because he's level five to the level three of Venus, and Venus just cleared a wolf camp. He's not level four. So taking away this Raptor will deny some catch-up experience here. It's just going to reset. Broxer didn't get the Venus Venomous Bite into the Smite off on it, so decides he doesn't want to do it. Staying around for the time being as uh, he continues to play around that top side of the map. Reckless is 10 CS down in this bottom lane, as we kind of expected him to be. There is a big wave here, so we'll have to see how well he's able to farm under the tower. Reckless is always known for his farming capabilities and gets mm -hmm. all but two of them. So he'll be pretty happy with that in the bottom I, side of the map. I've done a ton of research on Reckless. It was actually going to be a, a breakdown of mine at one point. And I've just noticed from like a stylistic perspective, he's very confident in his abilities, and the way uh, I kind of extrapolated that was the amount of emphasis he puts on attack speed items. He just bought double dagger to try and get Tristana explosive shots off and more stacks, and to attack move, and he really trusts his ability to attack move at max attack speeds. I look at his rune page, and even when he was like, he ran like a single rune page all of spring, even when Jin and Varus were like lethality and stuff, he was still running like attack speed on these guys. And I was just like, he obviously puts a lot of weight on that. And that's why when he played Kennen, first item was Berserker's Greaves, and they just loved buying daggers. There was a time where he could have bought uh, a full zeal, and he just bought more daggers instead of completed uh, items. It was just all about attack speed for him because he trusts his ability to stutter step. Things like Twitch and Tristana really benefit there, as well as Callista, because you they have abilities that reward you for getting off as many autos as possible, the Twitch Poison, the Tristana E, and also the Callista Ren. Uh, and that's really what he goes for, because he's just so mechanically good at those types of champions and maximizing his uh, his damage output with just attack speed. Oh. On the other side of the rift, Big Coro is known as one of the best AD carries over in the GPL. Him alongside Pallet, known as the best bot lane in Vietnam. So they are a very strong matchup against Reckless and Jezzes, who are slightly behind in that bottom lane, as expected. And talking of attack speed, it's triple dagger for Reckless. Yeah. So just continues to uh, stack up those shivs to try and slice down Big Ko and Pallet. Boxer looking for this dive up towards the top side. Locked Box in the shield of Duran. Oh, Soaz to Macro. to Soaz. Boxer looking to see if he can get the damage. The oh. comes out and Soaz goes down. Good kill for Nocti as here comes Venus. Can he crush the spider under the barrel? Boxer takes a barrel to the face, still has the flash, the cocoon. Looking for the flash across the wall, does land a big core, engaged on here with the concussive blows. One more Reckless shot. needs one more shot, but can't quite get there. And now the turn. turns it back around the heel, the kill, big core with another for young generation. The biggest core on the team. He hasn't purchased yet, and they just won a two on two. And Fnatic took that because by the book, yeah, you should win that one, but there was a level advantage. You can see Big Koro is now level six, Reckless level four, because he's taken two backs already. He is the only Koro on the team as well, Zyrene. I mean, yeah. He made sure to point that out <laughs> yesterday. I'm going to point it out once more. But what an advantage for Young Generation against the bot lane that is so consistent for Fnatic. Now being able to get the kill, being able to secure the CS and the level advantage. A two-level disparity, as you say. Let's have another look at this top lane dive. Yeah, the top lane dive. This is where Nocti just gets the channel, and he knows it's coming then. Dodges Soaz, and then Soaz gets everything off. It was actually good from Soaz to get all of that off, but it was really good from Nocti to see that moment. Right here, Big Koro, level five, flashes away, and Reckless still has heal. Reckless could heal and push forward for the extra movement speed to hit Koro on the last shot, but he doesn't go for it. He heals afterwards, but the Ignite is down, and that's enough after the stacks and the shield from Jez's uh, fades away. So. Honestly, if Reckless wanted to go real ham, he would have he, he would have healed there. Playing into minions as well. Good polymorph from Pallet, because mm -hmm. as soon as Reckless jumped in, he was polymorph, which meant he wasn't able to get those stacks off even quicker. And it meant that Reckless had to overextend to try and get the kill. It's fantastic, though, from Pallet. Like, in those situations, most of the time, the two people who are stacked on top of each other will do, will do a lot better, because, especially because Jez has had the shield up in one direction. But the fact that Pallet got the slow across multiple people, stopped them from reaching him, and we had that polymorph, made it really good for them. And Pallet, I mean, I'm trying to think back to yesterday, Pallet has some fantastic plays. Constant. Incredibly strong player. Broxer is snuck into this bottom side of the map, but 
You can see Fnatic calling for aid in the lane where they are struggling. Pallet knows this is around. The cocoon doesn't land. Chain of Corruption misses as well to the side. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Norl is going to be able to jump onto Caps a little bit. Not going to do too much to him, but Caps, even with a 20 CS advantage here, hasn't been able to really snowball this lane away from Norl. We saw when Norl was ahead yesterday, he really shut down Caps. Caps here not had the support from the rest of his team that Young Generation provide to their mid laner. Yeah, but like you said, up 10 CS per minute already for Caps. He's been CSing incredibly well in this matchup. That's pretty easy for him. But not for Reckless. He's at 57 CS. He's almost half of what he usually is at this stage. And it's great job from Young Generation to shut him down. Yeah, Reckless is in a pretty bad position. And like I said, they could start four manning, five manning bottom with these double teleports. And now this mid lane matchup starts flipping a little bit depending on the Cassidy's aggression and who's around. Oh, he still got stunned. Stun, Dark Sphere, Scatter the Weak is up as well for Caps if he wants to be. Broxa. Hasn't got heal. Boxer misses, well, doesn't miss the cocoon, forces the flash from Norm. Yeah, still very important that he got that out. And now, this bottom lane is at a huge disadvantage. Reckless has triple dagger versus this Bilgewater Cutlass and a dagger. And so this is actually just a big disparity. Interesting to see Pallet isn't rushing an Ardent Sensor here either. Goes for the Frost Fang, looks like he's going Sight Stone next as well. Realizing that perhaps getting that extra attack speed on a Varus isn't quite as important early on. And they want to make sure that if Brox is going to continually come down here and try and save Reckless and Jezzes, that they have vision awareness on that Elise. Yeah, and Frost Fang, well, we'll see what happens here, actually. They're all hiding in this bush down bottom. Reckless stepping up. They're going to exploit him. Of it. There we go. He has to jump across the wall. Chase, Glitter Lance, Ignite. Wow. Long shot, the Vietnamese sniper from Big Koro. And so he gets the kill from long range. Big Koro is just shutting him down. And Reckless, this is going to go from bad to worse because Tristana, I talked about Reckless's style of buying a lot of attack speed sometimes and the way that his rune pages are set up. Like all attack speed blues, two attack speed quintessences, a lifesteal quint, and then he has three uh, attack speed reds. He has so much attack speed in his page, very little AD, and it looks like he was maybe going for early maybe Static Shiv here to help wave clear, something along those lines. But now, low damage, low attack damage behind Tristana, already having a lot of attack speed from her Q, is gonna make it very difficult for him to just start picking up this CS quickly, and getting into this game. If this was just, Pallet, Pallet Man has been doing so much damage here. So that, much work as well. Yeah, the fact he upgraded that Frost Fang has actually been huge. And the fact that he didn't go for the coin, didn't go for passivity, saying it's time to go back to the beginning of the year where everybody was buying this Frost Fang, everybody was just auto attacking, trying to get an advantage in the lane. And it's important to look at the advantage that young generation have gained as well, because 12 minutes in, they're already 1,200 gold ahead. If this was a, a tier one seed, if this was the other way around, a Fnatic with this far ahead, we'd say the game is slipping away from young generation. Here, Fnatic needs to show us that they have mental strength, that they're able to come back from this sort of deficit because it's their consistent players who are faltering at the moment. Yeah, and you look at where this advantage is, 600 gold advantage on the Elise. We saw that he was up a little bit early. Bottom lane, 13 to 1400 gold advantage for Big Coro, and then on Pallet, there's a 600 gold advantage for him as well. That's monumental. Having it basically 2,000 gold ahead in just a single lane is absolutely devastating. They've already got first tower blood to bot. Now they rotate to top. They force Soas out of position. This is superlative stuff from Young Generation. They are showing us why the GPL deserved a second seed after Gigabyte Marines did so well at MSR. Yeah, after day one, it was kind of like, okay, what's going on? They lost to Chaos Latin Gamers, and then they ended up taking Fnatic to 52 minutes and dropping the ball. Right here, though, four people from Fnatic on the bottom side for Nocti. But Nocti gets out, does have to burn the flash. They're going to get the tower, but look at the top side of the map. Big Coro and Pallet are still pushing in. Venus here to help as well. And at the moment, the whole game is revolving around this bot lane from Young Generation. And Nocti he was able to help clear that wave out, so it's actually a huge tempo advantage. This is going to go three turrets up to one here, and they don't have a minion wave after this, but they'll be able to clear the next one and get complete control of this area. And you've got Rift Herald up there if you want it as uh -huh. well, and Ocean Drake not as important in the early game. Get the Rift Herald, get mid tower. If you look at mid lane as well, this is the lane we said Caps needed to dominate. He's only 14 CS ahead, Cyrene. He hasn't been able to kill the Cassadin. He hasn't been able to shut down Null. And Young Generation are just looking absolutely dominant in this game. And the way that Young Generation took that last game against Fnatic so long was because of Null and the mid lane priority. But now it's just the bottom lane outclassing Fnatic's bottom lane with an aggressive matchup. They were able to push it and they got those two on two kills in a fight that Fnatic picked.
what I love about this as well is a lot of people came into this game saying that young generation may cause an upset, but this isn't an upset. This is them just playing better than Fnatic. It's not like they've had a, a mechanical misplay from a Fnatic that's allowed them to get this lead. They destroyed the bottom lane of Reckless and Jezzes, and they're taking their fate into their own hands. They're saying, we don't want to go to a tiebreaker. We don't want to have to face Chaos Ladding Gamers again. If we get this two and two in the group, then we get the second seed going into the elimination matches next week. Yeah, and they've only lost a single turret here up against the three that they've been able to take. And now they have Rift Herald to look mid, and they put their bottom lane, which has been doing so well, like you said, mid. They're trying to go by the book here. This should be a Rift Herald down mid, an aggressive play, trying to make sure that the Sidra just can't keep wave clearing and get that Ocean Drake, get whatever they can at this point in the game. Because we saw what happened with Fnatic in that 26-minute game. Reckless will pick up the farm. It's what's just going to happen in these side lanes. He'll get to his two-item spike. You want to try to head him off, get enough of an advantage where that doesn't matter, or you slow that down. Pilot has to flash away from Soaz, and Fnatic grouping up as five men mid, not something we commonly see from them, usually someone in a side lane. Yeah, it's because the 1-3-1 is coming out from Young Generation. They're trying to maximize farm on the Cassidy and get somebody to answer him. So as soon as somebody answers this Cassidy in the bottom side that doesn't have a TP like Soaz, who blew it earlier, the three globals of Young Generation give them so much proactivity. Young Generation do have the opportunities, you say, to continue with this 1-3-1 one, one, basically throughout the entire game. Double TP, Hero's Entrance as well. You can get a Lich Bane on your Cassidy to improve that turret-taking ability. Yeah. And oh, you can oh, use oh, oh, Rift Herald, but that's scattered and that Rift Herald should be cancelled out. But Caps goes low, the explosive cast takes him down, and Young Generation used the Rift Herald as a bit of a bait and looked towards mid. Well, I feel like he didn't know it was going to happen. He got picked up. Caps went forward, blew both summoner spells, and it's going to be the same result as if they had picked up that Rift Herald and used it here. Unless this wave gets cleared. Boxer there with the Volatile Spider. from behind on, on the flank. One minion remains, but here comes Reckless. Nord jumps in, trying to take the tower first. Wild Shots goes knock up with the Glacial Fissure. The stun down, and Reckless gets a kill. Nord a little bit over aggressive for that mid lane tower. Yeah, the fact that the wave clear came through from Broxa, and then it was just a flank from Null, and he tried to just hit the turret, and the rest of his team wasn't on the same page. Big Koro actually took a decent amount of damage there, and he had to back up, so that turret still stands, and the Rift Herald fizzles out after Cap's play to sacrifice himself. Reckless once again pushing forward a little bit. We've seen Jezzes and Reckless on this Tristana bomb combo before. It's what helped them hold out against H2K in the regional qualifiers, but. Now they're trying to defend this turret. It is low, down to about 100 HP or so. Not quite going to go down yet. And it's important to note as well, Fnatic have already secured the first seed in this group. This is a game more for practice for them on the stage. Of course, they want to have a 4-0 victory, but if they do lose against Young Generation, it doesn't mean anything towards their first seed hopes. Now, oh, faded it forward, but he gets what, what he wants. He stops it. What? Koro there, stepping up. Big Koro. Doing work. That he is, Big Koro and Pallet, as you say, doing a very good job. Nall, in fact, you could, I could list off every member of Young Generation and say how well they played, not only in this game, but across the course of today. Yesterday, perhaps a little bit of a blip for them, but they have definitely acclimatized and adjusted towards the Wuhan World Stage today. Yeah, Venus, in my opinion, is kind of the one player where I'm not watching him step up as much as some of the others here, where everybody's kind of had those standout moments. Venus is just by the book, Pretty consistent so far. And now they're just gonna get tempo mid. He's there as well. And that's might might be another two turret for one trade. And on top of it, the casting is shoving bottom lane. So they can go to the dragon if they want, or they can go take a tier two bottom if it's not answered in time. Five towers to two in favor of young generation. They are three thousand gold ahead and looking like they want to close this one out pretty quickly. It could be. A 26-minute game going the opposite way to what most people expected. Young Generation not going to go completely in for this tower in the bot lane, perhaps accepting the fact that Fnatic were able to respond. Yeah, they're like, we're ahead. We don't have to really push anything just yet. But now you see two items for Big Koro. Reckless on that one and a half was kind of rushing the static shiv in that situation to look for wave clear and look for the ability to pick up CS later. But now he finds himself 1,700 gold behind his lane opponent, and Pallet is up almost 1,000. The rewards behind Reckless and Jez is here, and there are two members of Young Generation, but I think if there's an opportunity for Nord to teleport in here, or for Noxy to get there, they might take this. And remember, when we talked about this at the start, it was five people, four people in the bottom is the ideal situation for Young Generation to just destroy Reckless and Jez's. That's what this composition is built to do in the mid late game. Fnatic, on the other hand, that three-man unit of the top side of the map, abandoned bottom, 
and then have caps Brox in so as get something done. We saw so as roam early to stop Venus from like Scuttle Crab because he had priority, but then caps and Broxa haven't had that same pair up, but Brox has done all right so far. Brox has been in the good position. It's just now the time that he's actually on that champion that he needs to have a good early game. He's had it, but the rest of his team just hasn't had much of the same. And he had to go bot a lot to help relieve pressure onto Reckless and Jezzers. Fnatic perhaps could have just given up that lane a little bit more and said, okay, we get Caps ahead in mid. We shut down Null before he gets the Rift Walk. Young Generation doing a good job of drawing Fnatic where they wanted them on this map. And we saw him try to go top, right, in that dive. And that 2v1 dive where it went one for one for first blood was actually pretty big with Broxa picking that one up uh, and then Nocti getting one back. And that's where, you know, your bottom side of the map is losing. You want to get something top. It didn't work out exactly like he wanted. And that would have been what he was looking for, some type of advantage in push. You can push into jungle afterwards, get something. And because Young Generation just had that two-on-two -two bottom go their way, even with an item disadvantage, they, they end up slingshotting ahead. Fnatic force mid, they will be able to get this tower down. Tristana very good at taking turrets, even when slightly behind. But you want to take stock of uh, sort of how the game is positioned here, Zyrene? Yeah, especially in position with Big Coral going top. He's pulling a Reckless right now. He's just going to the side lane, trying to pick up farm, make sure Reckless doesn't you know, get back into the game or get ahead of him, try to match him. But Reckless is now going to go top, pick up that farm himself, and try to get back into the game. He's almost at that two-item power spike for himself. Baron is now on the table for both these teams. You have two items on Big Coral as well, alongside a QSS, which can be vital in these fights if he uses it effectively. As you say, I would like to see Noel being the one in this side lane, pushing it out because he's got the teleport, he's got the rift walk, he's got the ability to join up the fight. Isn't going to go towards the Lich Bane quite yet. Instead, building up towards a Zonya's Hourglass to keep himself a little bit safer in these battles. And I talked about this in the previous game where you know, just because a team is behind doesn't mean they're in a worse position overall. Because right now, with Young Generation, the position that they're in is one that's advantageous, but they would love to get that Tier 2 bottom turret. But they can't because Baron is up. Baron is on the table. If you put two people bottom, it's not going to work. You have to put somebody like Null bottom and have maybe two people like uh, Null and Nocti go after Soaz, and then they'd be able to teleport in afterwards. So that's kind of how you mix this up. So they have options, but they're not really in an enormously advantageous position because they need to force the tempo before Reckless gets back online. Once again, the tank battle in the bottom lane when and the Baron is available is something we see so often now. Neither of these tanks sh really should be able to solo kill the other. You're going to have to look at someone, one of the junglers coming down to help that out. Both of them have pretty good sustain across the board. And Nocti's done a very good job today. He's TP? going to teleport behind the Tristana they here. It, they see it. Boxer spots out Norl. Syndra's going to trade there as well. Here comes the hero's entrance. Norl is the one they want to keep safe. And already, actually, Reckless is staying around here. He's jumped up towards the top side. He's going to go on to a ward. They see him now. There we are. He's going to be seen there. Now he's he actually... backing. Reckless, yeah. you're on a pink ward. Venus jumps across the wall. Reckless. You're on a ward, my man. And there comes the explosive cast knocking back Pallet with the wild growth. And Reckless is dead. He just was not aware of the vision from Young Generation. And now this could spell a Baron for YG. He could see it. He just didn't respect it. And then the cast came over. Norse jumping in onto Jezzes and Broxer here as Broxer is forced back. Young Generation don't quite want to pull the trigger on the Baron yet. And they will have the teleport coming in here from Soez as well. It looks like a bait. They're all just standing there. They're standing there. They know they don't have vision because the control board. They're going to try to catch somebody who walks up. There, they're going to catch out. Cats who flashes away. Noor jumps straight into a cocoon. Jezzes puts up the unbreakable and tries to shield the rest of the fanatic lineup. Noor continuing to press forward. Caps is low. Already Jez is dead. Noor still alive in the front line. So as there doesn't have the beast, so he can't numb down on the young generation. And the millennials are winning this battle. They've killed so many industries, and at the moment, they are killing fanatic. Young generation looking for Broxa. Big Coro face straight into Whoa. him. The cocoon hits. Pallet flashes away and that's who Broxer wanted. Now Broxer knocked airborne. That's a dead jungler and Young Generation can look straight towards the Baron if they want. And Young Generation didn't give a damn about their minion waves. There's a gigantic one on the top side. There was one that was pushing towards their tier 2 mid. They're saying the Baron threat is way too much for Fnatic to say we'll go mid and you can get Baron. Fnatic tried to check it and then Caps got caught being too far forward even though his, he had a bit of a tank line there. Young Generation don't give a ba damn about Fnatic's legacy. They are the newcomers. They are the second seed from the GPL, and they are the team that are about to take Whoa. Baron away from Fnatic. And Fnatic have something to say about this. Keep this Cho'Gath out if you're Young Generation. 
No feast for him just quite yeah, yet. Almost. 2,000 HP on that Baron. His Jez is in the front line. Caps off towards Zindra. the side trying to steal it. Can't get it. 51 HP and the Galio secures it. And now Fnatic have to run for the hills because Jez is, is going to go down. Young Generation, eight kills to two up. A Baron in their back pocket and they are destroying Fnatic. The last time they played each other, Young Generation never had an advantage this big. The 5,000 gold that they've accrued from the bottom lane, from this bait from these kills. They are playing this so well from the picks to the fact that they played it out and baited this. This is what you were expecting from a team that was the sister team of the Gigabyte Marines. Clever, sleuth, able to find their ways into these fights. And that was just incredibly well played and taking control of their own destiny as well. Looking for that second seed of the group, looking to show Cloud9 and Team WE and either Fenerbahce or the Hong Kong Attitude that they are a team to be reckoned with. They are a team that you have to fear coming into the elimination matches in the next few days. There was an Infernal Dragon that went over to Young Generation during that, so they're getting even more. This Baron buff, the fact that they have the 1-3-1 one, one and a uh, composition, they can push, they can push multiple lanes, they have the ultimate from the Galio, and so as just split push and try to get something. For this game, I was wondering if I could continue to cast two tiebreakers tonight. Well, Young Generation have done me a favor because they want to make it only one. Fnatic holding on to their base. Noctis in mid, pushing for that inhibitor tower, the knockback. There's the cocoon onto Nord. Fnatic do not pull the trigger. Noctis still in mid. There's the root, the knockback. Explosive cast used, unbreakable, put up by Jezus as they try and defend this turret. They continue to keep at bay the Young Generation, but Fnatic are looking weak at the moment yes they're looking incredibly weak even you just look at the gold that reckless has he has almost the same amount of gold as venus all the carries on the side of young generation just have more gold than reckless and he's only got two items completed now he really wants that rapid fire cannon that three item spike that one that lets him kite around really heavily but this is a start but I feel like Young Generation are just going to run away with this. So as comes down, there is a hero's entrance available for Nocti, but at the moment he is just pushing mid, getting that inhibitor for himself. They split it up. It's a 1-4, not the 1-3-1 quite yet. Nor deciding he wants to be with the team. He needs to be there from the start. Chip damage after chip damage on Locking towards up. this tower. Bikoa walks up the shield, and they will get the turret. Oh. Fnatic unable to defend their base as Young Generation crack into it. So has knocked back. He popped the Righteous Glory. Here's Nocti as well, joining the fight. Jezus jumps forward. Reckless and Caps are looking for it. They're on the back line. The Cocoon doesn't connect. The Tor does, and Jezus once again has to step back. They cannot find inroads. They cannot find a point of weakness in this Young Generation. And I was watching the player cams right before that. So as with his fingers to his temple, figuring out stressing what are we going to do here this is not a good situation for the team and they're trying to find some weakness like you said trying to find an engage there so they don't have to just give up the inhibitor and now young generation in a spot where they have enough of an advantage early on and it's not towards that six item point just just yet that they'll be able to push this get more press this wave that they have and they don't have to worry too much about that bottom inhib you can see though no is he trying to be a hero he's gonna I don't know. I'm pretty sure I've seen backdoors from Fnatic in the past. Yes. Noel is trying to do what Fnatic did against SK to <laughs> them. I don't know if it's that extreme, but he's trying to pull people to him. He's got ample wards on that side that just got cleared out by Jez's and also Caps. But there's a siege on the top side with like a four stack minion wave here. They need to Super clear this out. Wave. They need Caps. No Baron buff remains on Young Generation though. So that minion wave is going to get cleared out by Reckless and by Caps. Reckless struggling this game. Already has three deaths. He only died once yesterday. The 1-3-1. One, one. Nall is down towards that bottom side. It's the 1-3-1. One, one. The Sheen has been completed on that Cassidy. Yeah, wants that Lich Bane to help him slip push, but he has to teleport. Nocti has the two globals. And this is how you pull them apart because they don't have two teleports to match you. And you can just be in multiple places or provide multiple places pressure simultaneously. Now, the Baron power play did not look too impressive. Only 1,800 gold, but they cracked the base of Fnatic, and they allowed this 1-3-1 to really take effect. Well, a lot of it is they got the kills before they took the Baron, right? It wasn't afterwards, so it's not going to add up into that Baron power play. They got a decent amount of gold from that. And you can see right now, oh, Reckless. Here is stop is coming bot because they want to kill Soaz. Nall is going in. Soaz has to run. He has got the feast. Feral screen comes out. There's the Gargoyles as well. Reckless and Broxo are on their way, and now they're going to turn it back on towards Nocti, perhaps an overstay by the young generation, but Nocti and Nall will back away, and they're getting turrets up in the top lane, in the middle. 
mid lane as well. Venus is pushing for these towers. Now, Venus is the one who's really providing that pressure. So Caps is able to just walk around. He's the one who's pretty much that primary wave clear at the moment. And Null, there's TP. So as once this, Null has half mana. Feral screen comes out. He will Void Rift away. Still has a flash as well. Omnom is not enough. He cannot eat down that delicious Cassidy nugget. And meanwhile, the rest of Young Generation Blast. are going for this. You can tell Soaz wants the kill, but he just can't do enough. Ah, oh, and the face palm there from him. He knows that it's a stressful situation. And this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about high variance plays. There's a chance that works out. Low chance that it does work, but you have to take those plays in this situation. And that's what he's feeling right now is that pressure. Importantly though, that inhibitor stands. So does the mid lane tower. Fnatic are getting to a point where you have a three item AD carry. They are starting to scale just a little bit more. Thing that sucks though, Soaz no longer has the flash for a flash attempted steal on Baron, and he doesn't have teleport for when that's up. So now you're gonna get pulled apart by these double teleports that are both up by Young Generation, and you won't have one to answer yourself. So Fnatic, if they really wanna contest this Baron, they probably have to get there first or force out a teleport somehow, force out a play in the bottom lane and then fight up towards it. There's an Ocean Drake up in 30 seconds as well. Young Generation will be happy to secure that. Pretty easy to do because there is no vision for Fnatic at all. So what Fnatic are gonna try to do is get mid priority, go to Baron, try to get it or force a fight and force teleports to them. But Null may just get this split push going. So is it going down bot without teleport here Ooh, as well. Okay. Null can trade into him pretty effectively if he can dodge around enough. And now Young Generation will be the team looking to take the front foot, looking to get the vision control around this Baron. You can see, Soaz clears the wave, runs up, and Null is just gonna run right back down bottom. And there's this window here of only a few seconds where you have to find something on Young Generation if you're Fnatic. And they may have found it with Nocti, but he's hella tank. Yeah, should have drowned will keep him alive for the time being, knocked back from Venus. That's an ultimate use. It's a good disengage though, because that allows Null to continue pushing this bottom side. I think they kept Soaz around across towards the top side as well. It Mid. might just be Fnatic <laughs> giving up this inhibitor, but they've been played across the map. Perhaps they've even played themselves because they are investing time into this Baron and Young Generation are investing time into the base. They're looking for it. Three members against two. Venus looking for the steal as well. Knock, Knock back away. with the shot. Fnatic get the empowered recalls from the Baron, but can they get away from Nocti and Venus? Because at the moment, ah! their Nexus Towers are falling. Young Generation are looking for the upset of the tournament as they go for the Nexus Towers. The backs come out. No, Norl is jumping around. Well, Noel could do the castle and he could do the back door. He's, done it. He's looking for it. Is he gonna get it against Fnatic? Oh. Box has killed one. Noel Pallet Nazi. Young Generation get the win against Fnatic. No tiebreaker. Young Generation are the number two team out of the group, taking down Fnatic. I told you he'd do it. I told you he'd do it. <laughs> Noel with an amazing play. Young Generation just blowing my mind with how well they played that game. It was methodical, it was clean. They only needed eight kills to beat Fnatic. And we're talking about macro. That was a game where once they had an advantage, they knew how to leverage it. That is knowing that, hey, we got the dagger in. How do we twist this thing? A lot of teams drop that step and say, we have this thousand gold advantage, 2000. They knew exactly what to do with it. They got the advantage bottom, swapped to get turrets. Even though the Rift Herald failed mid, they were able to keep pushing and they used that advantage and the 1-3-1 to pull Fnatic apart. And you saw Fnatic desperate 